Welcome to the new crafting guide, this time for standard 6 link bow for essence drain, which is one of the most important pieces for my occultist low life essence drain contagion plus bane build. Before I show you step by step how to craft this bow, here's short update for all who follow my occultist ed bane build. If you want to skip some parts of this video, you can check my pinned comment with the table of the contents. In my first video for this build, I showcased my gear I used to start farming maps. Since then I got some nice upgrades. My first big upgrade was 5 link chevron wrappings and today I got 6 link. In my body armor I have Bane linked with despair, efficacy, void manipulation and control destruction and arcane search. Instead of arcane search you can use swift affliction, empower level 3 or if you can afford empower level 4. I got the cheap level 20 bane, which I will soon replace with level 21. My next big upgrade is 6 link standard essence drain bow. The total crafting cost was around 8 exalted orbs. In the bow I have level 20 essence drain linked with void manipulation, control destruction, efficacy, swift affliction and level 3 empower. I need to save currency for level 21 essence drain and for level 4 empower. This bow and do you have a room? I do not know what a room is. This level will be 28. The higher the level, the more damage you get for your essence drain. With a bow, I got uh, the best quiver for this build, Soul Strike. The good news is this quiver is cheap, around 15 chaos for one with a good roll for two maximum energy shield mod. The next upgrade was the helmet. I got a base with a cheap but still nice labyrinth tension and I was lucky to get these mods after using just two chaos. It is good old chaos spam craft where you use chaos orbs to reroll all explicit mods. The best way to craft is of course with dense fossils but don't spend too much currency because this is not your end game helmet. In my helmet I have contagion linked with increased area of effect and I also have cast when damage taken level 3 linked with Wittering Step level 10. Next are gloves. I paid 10 chaos for gloves with an open prefix, then I crafted increase energy shield with my crafting bench. Try to spend as little as possible, because for the end game you can craft much better. In my gloves I have summon skitterbots and discipline. You can replace summon skitterbots with flesh and stone in sand stance, but keep in mind you will lose more than 15% damage. I also have malevolence linked with level 19 in my blood magic. Blood magic must be minimum level 19 and it is even better to use this level than to go for level 20. The next upgrade was rare boots with a nice amount of energy shield and resistance. To save currency look for one with open prefix with space for energy shield mod. I got one more upgrade, new ring to help me sort my resistances. The rest stay the same. I will soon start crafting rings, belt, helmet and gloves and I will post new updated crafting guides. In my boots I have wither linked with spell totem and multiple totems. I also have flame dash. On the passive tree I picked the energy shield. Later I will try to get a nice medium cluster jewel to use along with my large and small cluster jewel. If you have any questions about this build, you can leave them in comments or send me a message inside the game. My IGN is MC Red Mirror Witch. Now let's start with crafting guide. The mods you need to get are prefix plus 1 to level of socket gems and suffix 31 to 35% to damage over time multiplier. Also you need to add 3 mods from your crafting bench. Can have up to 3 crafted modifiers, plus 2 to level of socket support gems and 36 to 40% to chaos damage over time multiplier. Last mod is random. The best random mod you can get is some resistance you may miss or maybe increase projectile speed which is nice for essence drain. Now the first step is to get base for this crafting. You will need 6 link bow item level 82 without any influence. The price for this base will depend on dexterity requirement. My advice is to get a bow with a maximum 125 dexterity. 
the which as a class start with 14 dexterity. I have another 60 on my passive tree. On my quiver I have 30. Uh, when I get presence of Chayula amulet, that is another 60. That is total 120, meaning I need just 5 more dexterity on the rest of the gear. The only problems both with low dexterity requirement are more expensive. The current price is around 3 to 4 exalted orbs. To have a chance to get this a bit cheaper, you can use a live search. If by any chance you manage to get 212 decks, you can buy a cheap base for less than 30 chaos. The middle solution is to search for bows with a maximum 170 dexterity. The current price is around 80 chaos and this way you can save lots of currency. Just be sure you have enough dexterity to use it. If you are unlucky to get enough decks on your gear, you can take plus 30 decks on your tree, though I hate spending passives on such notable. Also, you can get additional decks on some cluster jewels. In case you want to use bow with the best implicit 10% movement speed, you need to have minimum 222 dexterity. The last solution is really bad and that is to buy short bow item level 50. Because of low, light, low item level, you can get maximum 16 to 21 to damage over time multiplier, meaning 14% less than with item level 82. This 14% is like having one level higher ED. This is how much damage you lose if you use this bow as a base. Select any non-unique, 6 links, dexterity you prefer, uh, for item level put 82, no for influence and no for corrupted and mirrored. Be careful when you decide to buy this bow. If uh, dexterity requirement is in blue color like this one, it is because of mod reduce attribute requirements. And this is not the real attribute requirement for imperial bow is actually 212. So be sure to not make mistake. After you get your base, it is time to start crafting. Make your bow white if already is not magic. And if you think that quality will bring you luck, improve quality to 20. Use the orb of transportation and make bow magic. In this step, your goal is to craft magic bow with only one mod, 31 to 35% to damage over time multiplier. Now, at the start of crafting, you also need to decide what method to use to get the right color sockets for this bow. For standard ED bow, you need a 3 blue, 2 green and 1 red socket. The first option is to forget on chromatic orbs and use Warichi rank 3 crafting bench inside research safe house to add up to 3 white sockets. The good result will look like this. This is the only good option if you use a bow with a high dex requirement. The second option is nice for bows with maximum 125 dex. You need to use alteration orbs on your magic bow until you get 32% reduced attribute requirements. This will drop your 125 dex requirement to 84 or 85 and make getting the right colors much easier. Keep in mind, if you're unlucky, it could still take a huge amount of chromatics before you get the right colors. There are also crafting recipes for socket colors like at least 3 blue or at least 2 blue and 1 red, which I don't like to use because they are very expensive. On my first bow, after maybe 20 alteration orbs, I got our main mod 31 to 35% to damage over time multiplier before I got the mod for coloring. If you get the main mod with a random prefix, it is ok to reroll and keep trying to get 32% reduced attribute requirements. If you get lucky and get 31 to 35% to damage over time multiplier as the only mod on your magic bow, forget on chromatic orbs and use later Borigi crafting bench. I got this mod really fast and then was lucky to get the right colors after less than 30 chromatic orbs. Now with the right color sockets, it was time to start trying to get our main mod. In case you get this mod with a random prefix, you will need to use Orb of Unknown and try to remove that random mod. If you are unlucky and remove the main mod, you need to use Alteration Orbs until you again get 31-35% to, to damage over time multiplier. 
If you are very lucky, you can get plus 1 to level of socket in gems and 31 to 35% to damage over time multiplayer on your magic bow. And if you are extremely lucky, you could get plus 1 to level of socket in gems with a random suffix and then with your rigor orb hit 31 to 35% to damage over time multiplayer. To get something like B and C is very rare and I will explain both at the end of the guide. Now, after you get the magic bow with just one mod, our main 31 to 35% to damage over time multiplayer, you are ready to continue crafting. The good news, at this point nothing can go wrong unless you make some mistake. To reach step 4, your goal is to get a rare bow with two suffixes. First, you need to use the regal orb. You can either get suffix or prefix. If you get the suffix, you just reach step 4. Now, if you get a prefix with your regal and you were lucky to hit plus 1 to level of socket in gems, you just saved two exalted orbs. You have a rare bow with plus 1 to level of socket in gems and 31 to 35% to damage over time multiplayer. All you need to do is to craft three more mods with your crafting bench. In this case, you will also have an open suffix for which my advice is to use Redeemer Exalted Orb. From four mods you can hit, uh, the best is probably chance to gain Onslaught for four seconds on kill. And you will have 23 to 25% chance to gain Onslaught. Now, if you get any other prefix except plus one to level of socket in gems, you will need to do beast crafting. Add the suffix, remove a random prefix. Beast you need to use for this crafting is Faric Links Alpha. After beast crafting, you will have two suffixes and you are ready for step four. The first ones are watching survivors. Don't disappoint them. The ritual is complete. When you reach step 4, you need to use your crafting bench and craft cannot roll attack mods. Now it is time to use exalted orb and slam the prefix plus 1 to level of socket with gems. To finish crafting, you need to add 3 mods with your crafting bench. First, can have up to 3 crafted modifiers. The second mod is plus 2 to level of socketed support gems. And the last mod you need to add is 36 to 40% to chaos damage over time multiplier. Here is total crafting cost. If you need to buy alterations and chromatic orbs, you can use trade chat, post your want to buy on channel 1 to 50 and sometimes it is worth to post even up to trade chat 100. With trade chat you have a chance for a better ratio. I was able to buy all my alterations at 6 to 1 and chromatics at 9 to 1. A little warning, when you realize how much profit you can make by just flipping currency and all kind of divination cards, fragments, splinters, scarabs, you may forget on crafting this bow. The next tip for saving currency is to use live search to buy base bow for this crafting. This way so far I saved around 5 exalted orbs. Now for all people who want better random suffix for this bow and don't mind spending much more currency, when you get plus 1 to level of socket gems. 31 to 35% damage over time multiplier and a bad random suffix, use an orb of annulment and try to remove it. If you're lucky, you now have one open suffix and after you add three mods with your crafting bench, you can use Redeemer Exalted Orb. The best mod you can get are Onslaught mod, movement speed and increased damage for auras are nice and only bad mod is blind on hit. If you're unlucky and hit bad mod, just sell the bow and start crafting new. 
if you want to use bows with influence, only good are Crusader and Warlord. The only reason I sit to use these bows if you play in solo self-found league and you have only them as a base. After you craft cannot roll attack modifiers, your red ball will have 3 suffixes and no prefixes. When you slam Exalted Orb on normal bow without influence, an only mod you can get is plus 1 to level of socketed gems. This is true only for Crusader and Warlord base bows. If you use let's say Shaper base bow, you have chance to hit other mods which will make you fail this crafting. If you're thinking about fossil crafting, there is one bad news. This crafting is nerfed in 3.10 because it is not possible to get socketed skill deal 20% more spell damage. You need to be extremely lucky to get a better bow by using fossils, which doesn't mean I will not try later in the league. And when I do, I will make a crafting guide. And finally, the last tip is for Leo. Place Leo inside research safe house. Be sure he is rank 3 before you use his crafting bench. This crafting bench has the same function as the exalted orb and you can use it on any item with open mode as long that item is not unique, corrupted or mirrored. In case you get good mod, you can increase the value of your items for free without need to use exalted orbs. I probably forgot on many other important tips, so if you have any questions about this crafting, you can leave them in comments or send a message inside the game. This will be all for now, thanks for watching and see you next time!